so let me talk to you about tools for uh, the world we live in today. You look at the tools that businesses are using today, and I'm thinking Microsoft Office. Those tools are mostly there to help you create documents, small pieces of data, on PCs. And that was pretty much the way Multiplan worked 30 years ago. And for the last 30 years, things haven't changed very much. Now you fast forward and you take a look at the world we live in today. It's not so much about creation of new stuff. It's more about curation of stuff. Just look at the Twitter feed that's been going on. Lots of retweets. Uh, it's not about documents anymore. It's about big data. It's not about PCs anymore. It's about mobile devices. So essentially, we need to reinvent the tools of business based upon these three new assumptions. That's essentially what Stoic has done, and we're building that on top of Cloud Foundry. Uh, so in the past, we had documents. In the future, we have apps, essentially. We need to be able to turn documents into apps. In the past, we had to pick between public deployment or private deployment in your data center. In the future, we go hybrid. Uh, and this is pretty much what we are doing. So we turn documents into apps. What that means is that you give us a spreadsheet. This is a spreadsheet that came from Excel that I put into my drive on Google. You go to Stoic, you click in Import Spreadsheet. You pick the spreadsheet that you want. It will run for maybe 10 seconds, and it will create an app out of it. The way it works is that we look at the spreadsheet and we try to extract an object model out of it. And we do that because we've looked at 24 million spreadsheets, all the spreadsheets that Google could index, and we learned a ton load about spreadsheets, you know, how they are called, the names of the columns, the formats, pretty much everything. So we create a object model for it. We then put the data into a database in the cloud, uh, running on Cloud Foundry. Then we create an API on top of that, and on top of that we create a user interface, which you see here, and that takes just one click of the mouse. Now that we have an object model, if you don't like what we've done, you just click on a column and you can change the object model to your heart content. So you could say, for example, this field is required. Essentially, you start building a real app from the tool. And if you want to see what the object model looks like, because it's not just one sheet, one worksheet in the spreadsheet, it might be multiple of them that reference each other with complex formulas. We also extract an object model, show it to you there. We also keep the formulas. For doing that, we re-implemented the full language of formulas in Excel in JavaScript, because we kind of like JavaScript, even though it's scripting in the web browser. We actually are uh, Node.js guys, and we like it very much. Thank you. Uh, so we re-implemented all the functions of Excel. Uh, there are 450 of them in JavaScript, including all the bugs. And the bugs are a big deal because, well, we talk about that around the beer. Uh, now that we have an object model, we can do cool things like reverse lookups, for example. So I'm a pilot. This is an app that I built to track all my flights. Uh, and I fly on different types of airplanes. So I can see, for example, all the flights that I did on Cessna 172SP on the different uh, airplanes that I actually flew on. That comes for free. From there, because we analyze the data, we know, for example, what a date is, or we know what an address is that allows me to show the airports that I flew it onto a map. That also came for free. Or maybe showing the flights on a calendar. That's another perspective that we show you for the data. So essentially, we turn that spreadsheet into a full-blown app. Uh, it's also available on mobile devices, so we create a native app for the different platforms out of uh, the schema that we got where you can, for example, add a flight, and because it's a native app, you've got access to the features of the phone, like taking pictures. Uh, from there, we add more and more perspectives. For example, this is the one called Gantt that allows you to implement a fully functional clone of Microsoft Project with just a spreadsheet. You do that in about five minutes. Or oh, this one is called Kanban that essentially gives us the equivalent of a Pivotal Tracker. You might have used Pivotal Tracker. That took us a few days to build a full clone of Pivotal Tracker using Stoic. Uh, this one is the mind map that's essentially like MindJet Mind Manager. You turn a spreadsheet into a mind mapping tool, and it goes on. Uh, underneath, there is a few databases, including Elasticsearch, that allows you to do full text search on pretty much everything that you put in there. And you can connect Stoic to your email to do the same. So you go there, type a keyword, and you've got the result across all the objects that are in the system. So you don't have any of the limitation of the relational databases. There's analytics, there's all kinds of cool things, and you can even build real apps. So for example, we uh, built a fully functional, fu functional clone of um, uh, what is called Stack Overflow. I'm sure you've used Stack Overflow, the QNS site for programmers. So we built a clone of that, including the full gamification engine for the badges in less than five days. Uh, and it doesn't have to look like the standard UI that we have. This is essentially looking very much like Stack Overflow. So what is it built on? It's all built on Cloud Foundry. We started 18 months ago. 
uh, and it's JavaScript all the way through. Node.js on the server, JavaScript on the client. The reason why we use JavaScript is because so far, it's the only language that's running on both sides. That allows me to run the entire Stoic server on my phone so that I can go offline, right? So you can have the full business logic of the platform, put it on your phone, go offline, work on the data set that you want, then you go back online and it will synchronize everything together. On the back end, it's uh, working with multiple data stores, both SQL and NoSQL. The primary data store is Elasticsearch so that it can scale. Today, we're running the system with about a terabyte of structured data. Uh, and by the middle of next year, we should be at around 100 terabyte. The goal is by 2015 to demonstrate it to a petabyte. We'll come to that later. One of the apps that we built on top of Stoic, or we're actually finishing that, is a virtual drive. And it's one of the apps that you might be interested in. If you're about to deploy, you already deployed Cloud Foundry, one of the apps that you might want to give to your user is an equivalent of Dropbox or Google Drive that stores the file in your data center. That's essentially what we've done, plus the ability to map external public drives, such as Dropbox, onto subfolders of your private drive. Um, and this is all built on Cloud Foundry, plus about 95 libraries, JavaScript libraries, all of it being uh, open source. If you want it, uh, pricing, it's $25 per month for a gigabyte. Compare that to force.com, which is $2,000. Compare that to Intuit QuickBase, which is 25K for a gigabyte of structured data per month. Uh, that matters because if you want to go big data, and I'm sure many of you uh, want to do that, uh, if you look at the pricing per year, Intuit QuickBase will cost you a quarter of a billion dollars every year for a terabyte. Right? Think about it. Uh, you want to go petabyte? Well, that's essentially a quarter of a trillion, <laughs> which is about the GDP of Singapore and 160 countries uh, after them. Uh, so if you want a petabyte, just uh, give us a call. Uh, and so far, you can uh, buy it also on the store. Go to stoic.com, stoic.com. Thank you very much.